Some find it ferocious and aggressive with its fangs out. They find it muscular and angry, while others say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. There's a new controversy in India and the debate now surrounds the Asiatic lions in the 21 feet tall national emblem on top of the new parliament building. The opposition has claimed that the new lions on the emblem look ferocious and different from the original version, but the government has rubbished this, saying that the statue is a perfect replica of the original except for the size. Now, while the debate continues in this episode of KYC, let me explain what the constitution and the law says on the national emblem. Now, let me start this video with a bit of history here. The emblem was adopted, let me tell you, from the lion capital of one of the Ashoka pillars on January 26, 1950. The symbol was adopted along with the motto Satyamev Jayate, taken from the Mundaka Upanishad, which means truth always wins. The lion capital was erected in Sarnath, 250 BC. Now, after independence in 1947, the leaders were looking for a symbol that could be used as a national symbol. Till then, they, they didn't really have any idea. This is when Badruddin Tyabji, who was a civil services officer and a freedom fighter, and his wife Suraya Tyabji proposed the usage of the lion capital for this. According to their daughter, Lela Tyabji, the couple received several entries for the national emblem from art schools across the country, but the couple proposed using the the lion capital instead. And this was adopted, like I said, on 26 January 1950. Dinanath Bhargava is then believed to have sketched the national emblem on the pages of the constitution as well. He was a part of the team along with Anand Lal Bose, who designed various illustrations in the constitution. It's a very beautiful book if you see. So while the constitution does not have any specific provisions dealing with the national em emblem, it has the emblem's image etched on it. There's an image on the first page, there's another one on the fifth page. You can see these images images on the screen right now. These are from the photolithographic reproductions of the constitution available online. Now, Article 51A does uh, talk about the duty of citizens to respect the country's ideals, its institutions and along with its national flag and its national anthem, but nothing specifically, doesn't say anything specifically on the national emblem. But there is a law that talks about it. It's a fairly recent law called the State Emblem of India Prohibition of Improper Use Act 2005. We also have the State Emblem of India Regulation of Use Rules 2007, both of these together specify specifically deal with our national emblem and its usage. So for example, the rules list down the purposes for which uh, the emblem can be used. This includes crockery and cutlery used at the Rashtrapati Bhavan as well. It also specifies who all can display the national emblem on their cars. You can again see the list on your screens. These rules say that the emblem can be displayed on important public buildings like the Rashtrapati Bhavan, the Supreme Court, and now as it's being done, the Parliament House. Now, Appendix 1 and 2 of this 2005 law give the designs for the emblem. The first appendix has a simplified form of the design, as you can see on your screens, meant only for when the emblem has to be made in smaller sizes, like for example, in stationery like books, etc. The second appendix has a more detailed design meant for making bigger replicas of the emblem similar to what has now been unveiled. The schedule to this law also gives out a detailed description and design for the emblem uh, as well. It says that, uh, like I mentioned, that this is an adaptation from the Sarnath lion capital of Ashoka, which is preserved in the Sarnath Museum. Uh, the description explains that the profile of the lion capital showing three lions mounted on the abacus with a dharma chakra in the center, a bull on the right and a galloping horse on the left and the outlines of dharma chakras on the extreme right and left has been adopted as the state emblem of India. So it has very detailed descriptions on this. And along with this, it says that the motto Satyamev Jayate, like I mentioned, it means truth alone triumphs, written in Devanagari script below the profile of the lion capital is a part of the state emblem of India. Okay, so like I said, the law lays down the design, but does it allow the government to change this design? Now, let me take you back 2005 law Section 62F of this law says that the central government does have the power to specify the design of the emblem and to specify its use as well. What this means is that the central government has the power to specify the design of the emblem, like I said, and then 
since this is just a law, it can even change the e emblem completely by amending the law if it wants to. The amendment, of course, will be subject to approval by both the houses of the parliament. But basically what this means is this law does allow the central government to tweak the design of the emblem if it wants to. Of course, critics have since pointed out the importance of keeping the emblem as is and using the option to tweak it with extreme care and caution and only very, very rarely. That's all I have for you today. This is Apurva Mandhani for The Print. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.